Welcome to Indie Creators in the Joy Zone. You're enjoying uh, Suzanne Toro. How about that? How about them apples, Suzanne Toro? How about them apples? <laughs> <laughs> and we have uh, the lovely Frank Donner here with us, uh, CEO of Black Box Entertainment, indie creator himself. How about, how about a little explanation as to that wonderful tone that we were just hearing? I mean, how, how do you use that tone in your day-to-day -day life? Well, this is one of the mediums that I use for sound therapy and a dump, bunch of different applications. One for people that are in uh, clinical health situations, medical situations, but also people that are indie creators, people that want to reconnect to their creative source and put themselves back in a more so elevated that, state of being. That brings us into the joy zone, Absolutely, yeah? That's absolutely, That's a device from yeah. the outside. That's easier than a pill. That's easier than... Yeah. Uh, all sorts of little addictions that we have, addictive aversions that we have as human beings, isn't it? Yeah, it's a pretty quick switch, you know. Give, give me someone about five minutes and we can shift their energy and they can be moving into a different frequency and a different state of being. Yeah, so this is Indie Creators in the Joy Zone. So to get a grasp on what we're attempting to do here, the Joy Zone, you can think of it in contrast to the stress zone. And the stress zone is something that we have fully developed in ourselves, something that we put a lot of time and effort into developing. And the joy zone is its, is its opposite. And it's something that we don't necessarily strengthen on a day-to-day, moment-to-moment basis. And as an independent creator, or as an indie creator, and here we are at... Uh, here, here we are at Digital Hollywood, right? Yeah, Digital Hollywood. At the Hollywood. Ball Center, surrounded by, like, literally thousands of indie creators here to get knowledge, seeking knowledge on how to better themselves and how to better their craft. And, and we have a wonderful entrepreneur, CEO, uh, independent creator, at least when you started this uh, Black Box Entertainment years and years ago. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, I was going to first say, um, when Suzanne started to play, uh, I took a moment to pause, and that went straight to the heart. It's nice. beautiful, right? Yeah, and right. Um, I think that's the wonderful gift that you bring, and I've yeah. experienced it. Um, so a little bit about a black about black box creative group. Uh, we're a digital marketing and advertising agency in Hollywood. We just came off a wonderful campaign, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, for Quentin Tarantino and our client Sony, yeah. Yeah. which we're up for an award for the Cleo's. Congratulations. So, uh, talk about Joy Zone. Yeah, uh, fantastic. I have to shout out to all the team who did an amazing job. Uh, but uh, it's what you said, Tom. You know, it's great to be uh, on your show, and I was on it once before. You guys bring such a power, and when you talk about going into the Joy Zone and leaving the stress zone, that's something that I know a lot about, you know, having an agency now for 10 years with my business partner Jeff Wong um, there's many stresses and things that you know hit our lives and of course I had a uh, a big one this year uh, and you and Suzanne were a big part of getting me through that so it's so important more than ever to be working with people like you and Suzanne your great gifts as a shaman and as somebody who's really bringing out um, what people like us now in any position in life whether you're a CEO or an individual at a company more than ever we need those stress relievers well go ahead well what is gonna say is you know maybe even you could share because you are a seasoned executive and yes. we, we lose sight of that wisdom keepers are really important you know back in the day we utilized a wisdom keeper we didn't like send them away that we they were sought out commodity and if you can share a little bit about how important it is to adapt and move with uh, the industries we've been hearing a lot of talks about uh, the changes that are happening in the, in yeah. the environment and how we can do that from an elevated state versus a state of maybe fear Good or Lord stress. Good Lord, have mercy! <laughs> can, can you like boil that down into like a? Uh, uh, so, did you want? Did you want? To, I did. did I, I was tracking every step wow. of it. it it's amazing. Just, right it's amazing head. because right I think head. you brought it up, Tom. It's being here at Digital Hollywood. I just came off an OTT panel and had a wonderful chat with a gentleman from Fandango. And the panel was talking about, and much of what's going on here is the enormous amount of content being pushed. And as a, uh, you, you, have know, a, a you have an audience camera too, right out there. Oh, okay. Like and as a, as a thought leader uh, and someone moving into um, a stage where the company has to keep up with difference in trends, trends sometimes um, I'm hearing from people that can't quite read the tea leaves. Like, what is happening? And is there going to be a tipping point with all of this? So um, I think it's taking a step back and listening to what you just said. 
um, moving away from things that may be bringing us anxiety, uh, bringing more clarity of mind by taking a breath, by working with um, you, which I have done, and certainly this year more than ever, um, to be able to awaken some spirit so we can be a be better human beings and yeah, leaders. Yeah, absolutely. So. We have tons of indie creators out here. Actually, we have some out there in the audience right there. Then we have Esther, <laughs> TV producer. Samuel's TV, over there. That's Samuel. <laughs> we got Walter of the Walter We have Fonso. the proper animal hey, out there. we got Woo! the proper animal out there. What's up, buddy? <laughs> here we got our new friend. We're, that's Samuel. Samuel. <laughs> here we got Samuel. They're hanging we with, him, hanging with him tonight. But we got, this place is just jacked with independent producers. And, and so one of the fundamental logical transitions that we need to make as independent creators if we're going to be our best selves if we're going to survive uh, a challenging environment we have to figure out how to exist in our in, in a good vibe Absolutely. and we have to be able to perceive our environment in such a way that uh, we can survive some of these downs because when they're down you know somebody rejects your project somebody uh, uh, gives you a backhanded critique, somebody's jealous or envious of you, uh, an artist can take that to heart and it can be enough to, to even stop the process or make them quit or make them change directions. So to be able to build up an aspect of yourself where you can bring that into any meeting and survive uh, well coming out of it and use that as a motivation to keep moving forward in whatever your craft is, there's music, filmmaking, Absolutely. CEO guy of a, a marketing, major me marketing creating, major media company. Branding. And it's it's this pursuit and your skill and our ability to make the best of a tough situation that makes this show really kind of unique, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's so much, you probably can attest to many times being that you're, you know, trained actors and performing art, artists and writers that sometimes they get the rejection note. Uh, they go after it, right? And Frank, for you too, in the business world. But what I always remind my clients is that there's so many possibilities in that no. Yes, yes. That there's all these other things yeah. yes. that if you get too sorrowful yeah. about the no, uh, there's all these yeses all around it's you. <laughs> it's, def it's definitely those possibilities that that uh, keep us coming back to the well, you know, keep us keep us uh, vital and alive, and 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 taking risks and taking chances. I mean, what is an indie creator? You know, an indie creator is a nonconformist who uh, a nonconformist in a constant state of discovery who's taking endless risks in order to move their vision forward. Absolutely. That's that's what an indie creator is. And Frank, maybe you can share, because yeah. you kind of have an interesting, you know, job in Hollywood, uh, because you take creation and then you recreate the creation so you can reach their market in a new way. Uh, so you're constantly pushing the construct of yeah. what is. Like and you're right in the middle of like the, down, you're right? right in the middle of the biggest studios in Hollywood. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, I, mean I, I, I think you're working with what? Sony, uh, Sony, Paramount, DreamWorks, Disney, Sega. You know, this goes on, on and on. Uh, and I think to your point, you know, um, it is uh, working with studios and being given a gift to be able to say, here's some incredible content, and we now are sending it over to you, be able to work with that and then expose it to the community. But I think one of the things that's always been really wonderful for me is the team of people that we put around. I was mentioning this to the person uh, this morning at Fandango, from Fandango, is Black Box has always tried to hire, almost, almost like in that indie spirit, a fan or a geek, yeah. somebody who is really earnestly interested in the work that they're um, uh, working on. And I think that's been uh, our goal. Isn't that what company. you're looking for also in like a, a new person, a part of your team? You're looking Absolutely. for somebody that has that positive vibe, somebody Absolutely. that can actually enhance the team that you already have. Yes. Right? I mean, I think it's also that goes back to the truth and honesty. You know, I always wanted to be part of something that wasn't just saying, well, um, I remember years ago I was talking to an executive who I won't name his name at a big company and I was going to go to work with him as a young man and I thought he was a genius. I thought this guy knows everything about everything and he's able to sell and I went to him I said, you know, so how do you do it? I mean, what's your secret? And he said, 
faked sincerity. Oh, <laughs> I just went limp. And all, you know, always. You mean you're talking said, about being cleverly insincere? Yeah, and I said, you know oh, what, that's, no. not, that's not the yeah. way I would like to walk as a Good human Lord. being, nor would I want that for yeah. the company. I want everything to be sincere and truthful. Uh, we're currently working with a uh, particular client right now, and it's awesome to be in. This is a company I, I believe is going to do wonderful things, uh, and we've been chatting for the last month, uh, and it's just been great to um, expose our team in a truthful, honest way, get to that entrepreneurial spirit. And I think more than ever, even though it's a pretty amazing time in the industry with so much stuff happening, that leads to opportunity. But to your guys' point too, we need to be in the joy zone to be clear and concise to be able to um, bring that opportunity to us in a right way. Yeah, joy zone, like thinking of it as like a big bubble surrounding you. <laughs> oh yeah, I like love a big, that. The big I joy feel zone right bubble. I feel like I'm a good vibe. We are in a bubble. I feel the bubble. <laughs> feel the heart. I love it. <laughs> Hitting everybody. Well, it, you know, listening to some of the talks over the past few days, or the past day and change, has been kind of interesting because it seems like there are people trying to be fortune tellers for the future. Yes. Right, to, right. you know, make, make the money, make the creation. And there's also a little bit of frustration around uh, not knowing which way to go or yeah, how but look, the industries are Look at the things that changing. they focus on. They're like focus on analytics, data yeah. mining, uh, data banks, and using this sort of digital feedback to make creative decisions. And for me, that's 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 where the joy zone comes in. It actually informs an intelligent decision. Yeah. You, you know, what are you going to do with all that da mind data if you don't have a heart behind it, if you don't have a soul behind it, making an interpretation to contact right. the proper creator in order to get them to do your job? You yeah, know? there's there's a language that came up. It's, you know, data-driven yeah. creative. Data-driven creative? Yeah, that's all, but yeah, and data-driven creative. And I think creative's creative. I mean, data is a wonderful tool and a resource, but it's not the end-all, be-all to what's passionate right. and what's at the heart. Well, and think about it. The great ideas that have changed our world don't come from, like, someone saying, hey, I need this because yeah, these people are yeah. going to buy it. It came from the passion of, of the creation itself yep. and the core principles, and then it arose. Well, this whole industry is leaning more towards the data, the metadata, the data mining, and you can see even with all of that information, all the money and millions of dollars are investing in getting that anal those analytics, that a lot of their product fails. Right. Anyways, yeah. it's well, not like it's not like they're, you know, succeeding getting a getting home run every time they get up to bat. Right. I mean, it's, well, it's even someone was sharing in the AR and VR industry. They they were just telling her, "We just need it. Just do it. We don't want to think about it. Just do it." Right. But maybe we could share with the listeners a little bit about how to harness the creative seed. Yeah. How are you using the analytics and the met metadata and the? The data mining. How are we using it? Yeah, how, how are you? This one. I think, you know, I, to your, I can answer that real quickly. I mean, we have data analysts inside, and, and, and it's reporting. It's basically reporting and giving information. But you can use it as a tool to be able to guide you. But it's like telling someone to say, create me a viral video. You know, that, yeah. you know. That, Who calls that big shot? <laughs> right. Exactly. Who calls that big shot at your company? On which sense? Well, like if you get all the data together, and now who gets to call the shot? Well, or where does the creative seed come from? Uh, and, and real, right. Realistically. Yeah, I think I think you know. Again, I'll go back to the core of you know um, our company and and, and and great creative companies. It really is. <laughs> It's a, it's a love and a passion for something. It starts there. And I think data is definitely a tool that can be used and harnessed in great ways. And I'm not at all saying that we don't use it very uh, judiciously, but I do think it stems from a person's passion. And, you know, we recently were working on a project with uh, Sega, and, you know, we have several people that are really in tune with the brand. They love it. And some of the gems come from, you know, obviously the people who work at Sega, but also people who love it or passionate with it. And that sparks that right. fuel. Yeah. And then that creative juices start flowing. But again, I think we can even get more into that when things, if we're using things that you guys can bring to us. But I love what you just said. That is it. Spark that fuel. This is the spark to light that lights right. that fuel. You went like that, and I felt that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I felt that from you. Because yeah. that's exciting for you as an entrepreneur, I mean, as a, as a business owner. And a creator. To, get, to feel like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you are. I mean, Tom, you and I have worked together for years. And obviously, coming from the theater and being an actor, and, and you know, I t people say, you miss acting. I said, well, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> uh, I said, I'm a storyteller at heart. That's why I fell into marketing and advertising. Yeah. Because 
because we're storytelling story all the time. You know, we're storytelling, reaching an audience. Know, yeah, and then we yeah. Well, and, and share a little bit about that, Frank, because that's yeah. really if we talk about like data. Yeah. You know, we go to a football game. We know what football pl- people that are watching football like. We don't. I don't need analytics about that, right? Sure. So if you back the the viewer into a brand like that and saying, "Hey, I'm going to create an experience," you're going to tell a story, right? Absolutely. Yeah, about that experience, maybe about being in the stadium. Maybe it's a Dodger dog, and you want someone to have the thematic experience of that the quintessential Dodger dog that many people have heard about but never had. Mm. So if you could share a little bit, like for for you, how you are telling stories daily on all right, different fronts, right, you know? Right, 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 right. Me as With, a person? As yeah. a person and as uh, for your clients in the creation process, but also even uh, acquiring clients. You have to set the stage. Yeah, set so they want cr- to you know, create you. got with a 20 you. minute monologue right oh, now. Okay, right wow. now. Yeah, 20 minute monologue. <laughs> um, you know, I think it goes back again to, um, it starts with honesty. Three sentences or yeah. less. <laughs> uh, three sentences or less. Boy, you know, setting the stage 240 is, characters. You know, I, think, I think luckily we have the luxury of actually reaching and working with people and companies that we really want to they connect with our brand or our culture or our voice and we connect with them so that's the first beginning of the stage if there's a disconnect that could be not really where we want to be going right but we find an immediacy by connecting and it starts with the people level like i was discussing with this current uh, opportunity that we have we connected on an individual level the friend of mine that's working for this company said hey the ceo is a great guy he's got midwestern sensibilities he's passionate about what he's doing yes. he's on a mission yes. you know and she yes. talked to him he says you know he's a little bit like a labrador retriever you know he's a yeah. good person with a big yeah. heart he wants says, to have a relationship. And so for me, I'm like, I want to work with that person. So yeah. that sets the stage, and then everything else can glide from there. If that's, right. that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Well, well, really in, well said, just, right? In the joy zone, you have good connectivity, good relationships that you can build from, good communication. It's, it's funny. It's funny, though, when we use that term, <laughs> it's not like, it, it feels a little disconnected. Oh. I mean, it's like the joy zone, but it's, like it's, a, it's, it's, own it's room. almost like it's his own room, right? <laughs> well, but when, yeah. you, when you start to intertwine it into the creative process, right. it's in that intertwining yeah. with the creative process that we start to get to our potential. Right. So it's kind of like these two bubbles kind of coming together and just becoming one. Yeah. yeah. So it's hard to talk about, you know, the things that make us happy, like what's your joy zone? Yeah. When are yeah. you happiest? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's easy to take it like that. But what, when are you happiest? What's your joy zone? When, when are you happiest? What's my joy zone? When am I happiest? But I'm happiest with a cigar and a sunset <laughs> and, a, and a couple ounces of brandy. Yeah. That's when I'm, that's when I'm happiest. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. but the, the, the true you? craft. Oh, yeah. Well, the true craft might be if you're in a, a stress-filled time that you shift the energy in a room, which you're really good, masterful at. You, Frank, you have that gift too because you're an actor um, in all different ways, right? Right. So that's yeah, the yeah. exciting part. For well, sure. all an actor is is somebody that can create change and uh, fill up a transition uh, through space and time. In other words, anybody that is a, a change maker is taking action. Yeah. And in those moments where people step forward or step up or step into something or take a risk, they are in action. Risk and action are synonymous in our craft yeah. as uh, independent artists, uh, you know, trying to find something that connects with an audience through our own passion. See, that's yeah. the thing. Through our own valuation, our art, when it evolved to a certain seconds. points. Yeah, I, it 30 I, I, seconds? Yeah, 30 seconds. You're supposed to give me a two minutes. She, she, she not paying you attention? Looking, yeah, yeah, you weren't paying attention. I was well, going to Well, speaking you. of the joy zone, let's why don't we send, let's end send out with a little Send, it out. send us out, baby. Yeah. Send us out. <laughs> Thank mm-hmm. you.